This video is not for you, it's for my sons. I got two high school sons. Handsome, strong, smart, awesome kids. And boys, do you know where I am? Windy Gap. That's in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm traveling through here on my speaking tour and I realized that this month is the 25th year anniversary of my proposal to your mom. And I proposed your mom right here in Asheville, North Carolina, right down the street. There's a lake and a park bench and I took her out there with her dad's permission. I asked her to be my wife. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes you, the baby in the baby carriage. And boys, I'm back here in Asheville, North Carolina. I thought, what an appropriate moment for me to share with you some wisdom on what to look for in a wife and why I chose your mom. And I'm thankful that she chose me. Marriage is a sacred bond. For some couples, the bond is so weak so weak that half of the marriages actually break. They end in divorce. They lack the strength to endure hard times. I don't want that for you boys. I want you to enjoy a long life with your wife, just like I have enjoyed my life with your mom. I know you're only in high school. I know you know that I've told you no dating in high school, but I want to tell you the why. This is a good place for me to explain to you. You have to choose wisely. You can't play with the heart. Scripture says, do not awaken love until it is yet ready. Ready for what? Ready for love, ready for marriage, ready for the baby and the baby carriage in that order. So why awaken love if you're not ready for the rest that comes with it? Solomon said, a cord with three strands is not easily broken. Three strands can be braided together to create a cord that is very difficult to break. It's a strong tie. But do you know what's stronger than a braid? How about a braid with three braids? Yeah, take three braids and braid them together. That's triple the strength. And that's just about unbreakable. That's what your mom and I have. That's who your mom is, which I think is why we're so strong. And I wanna tell you about these three braids because if you know about them, you're gonna know what to look for in a wife that you commit the rest of your life to. I wanna talk about the braid of faith, the braid of faith. You know, when I met your mom, I realized she was a woman of the word. She loved the Bible. She read her Bible and prays daily. And you know something? You've seen that through your whole life. There's not a morning that you don't wake up and see her Bible's open on the table. That's the type of mom you have. You gotta see that in a woman because that means that she's on the path, the path of righteousness. Second thing, she's a woman of prayer. When I met Jill, she would always write me notes of how she's praying for me. And when I would hear or listen to her pray, I could tell that she was in love with God. That was a real intimate relationship that she depended on. It wasn't just random prayers that were written hundreds of years ago that she quoted. This was like legit heartfelt crying out for God's help. And that's what your mom has done throughout your childhood, continue to depend on the Lord. But the third thing, not just a woman of the word, not just a woman of prayer, but she's a woman of accountability. When I met her, she had two primary accountability partners, meaning she had older women who would disciple her, hang out with her, pour into her. Linda Sturchik, Sandy McIntosh, and there were others, but those were primarily the two ladies. You wanna see that in a woman. You wanna see that she has older women that are investing into her, helping her mature. Cause it's hard for a young woman to gain the confidence and understand who she is in Christ and all that kind of stuff. It takes discipleship. And so the woman that you choose to pursue after high school, that's a woman who reads the Bible and prays and is under the authority of accountability, other godly women in her life. That's the braid of faith. Now, let me tell you about the braid of character. This is amazing. You want the first thing that you really want to see is the motherly nature of a woman. I saw this in your mom. Now, when I say motherly nature, I'm not talking about controlling, but rather I'm talking about caregiving. She just, you, you could easily see her caring for children just by observing her. 
She has that motherly nature. She, she, she thinks of others. She's sacrificial. She's a servant's heart. You know, that's what your mom is. And I knew that when I would choose her and she would choose me, that we would have a family and she would be your mom. That's why I wanted to make sure that, that she would be great. And you've had the best mom. You know that. But the second thing about the braid of character would be an optimistic mindset. Someone who's able to see the good and the bad, the upside to a letdown. They're not toxically optimistic saying there's no bad. They're just beautifully optimistic saying good can come from bad, even the worst types of bad. You want this mindset in her because well, they say in the vows for better or worse, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Well, that that's the way marriage goes. There's sickness, there's worse, and sometimes there's death. And you want a woman who can endure hardship like a good soldier, believing that he who began a good work would be faithful to complete it, knowing that good is coming. That's hopeful. But the third element of the braid of character is that the girl you want is a woman who fears God. Now, I don't mean like afraid. There is that element. I'm not even saying reverential fear. I mean, there is that element too. But primarily when I say that a woman who fears the Lord, it's someone who loves God so much they are afraid of breaking God's heart. So they don't want to lie. Your mom has never lied. They don't want to steal. Your mom has never stolen. They don't want to cheat. Your mom has never cheated. There are certain things that this woman who fears the Lord simply can't do. And you need a woman like that because lying, cheating, stealing, those are the things that break apart a marriage. And so you need a woman who fears the Lord because that will be the governor of her behavior. She's not just afraid of getting caught. She's actually afraid of breaking the heart of the one she loves so much, and that's the Lord. You know, scripture says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is worthy to be praised. Finally, I want to tell you about the braid of attraction. This is the fun part. See, but it's not as important as the braid of character or the braid of faith. Faith is always first. But the braid of attraction is practically important. You know, you're a human being and your whole being is made up of three parts, body, spirit and soul so there needs to be body attraction physical attraction i know you're rolling your eyes you're saying gross dad <laughs> but you got to be attracted to the person or it's not even an option and your mom is very attracted to me no i'm just kidding i'm very attracted to your mom you know that you have a spirit which means you need christ in common that means she loves the same god that you love because you're a spirit being and you need to share that bond of attachment, not just in body, but in spirit, where you could worship God together. But the third is the solical connection, and that's friendship. This is the area that your mom and I struggle the most, and it's not her fault, it's my fault. I get distracted with work and all kinds of things, and I have to make a real effort to enjoy living life with your mom, and that's an area that I need to grow in, and I hope you learn from my mistakes in this particular area. The girl I want you to open your heart to at the right time, when it's ready, is a girl just like your mom. She's, I think, the standard of qualification, in my opinion. And it was with great wisdom that I pursued her to be my wife. And thankfully, she said yes. So 25 years ago, right here in this spot, I asked your mom to marry me. But those were the reasons why it wasn't just because I fell in love with her. I seriously and soberly considered the woman I would attach to for the rest of my life, who would be your mother, who would be my companion. And I knew she was getting the worst end of the deal, but I've slowly, I think, gotten better, and yet I still have a long ways to go. So that means you have to prepare yourself to be the husband worthy of pursuing. She's gonna to wanna to pursue someone who's worthy. And so I hope you don't forget that. Love you boys. I care about you. 
and your mom and I pray all the time for that girl. 